but there's an even better one I think it's called Offer Up, and you actually have your own profile. And it's more secure, but I brought it up there like last week or so one day. Just tried it out. And it didn't come out too bad. It yeah. Has a, has the whole flavor and everything. So. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What kind of wood did you like to use? I, I used a hickory. Hickory? And I only replaced it once. Cooked it for like 15 hours. Uh huh. What were you cooking? Were you like trying to uh, jerky stuff? Shoulder, pork shoulder. Pork shoulder? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dang, that's sick. That's super cool, man. It's great. On the other right, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how long have you been on the mission? So I've been out this. Next week is my year mark. Yeah, my good. I've been out almost 19 months. 19 months. So, uh, um, how long have you been in LDS church? I guess I've been, I've been, I was raised in okay. the LDS church. I was born there and then decided to come out on the so. Okay. I was in both areas in the church. Cool. What, what caused you both to, to I know we've been talking we've been texting with you a little bit yeah it's been hard to, for us to yeah like, so are you guys from like Northville Ave or I, I guess we uh well he's in the land I, we, I was in the land and we moved over to Palm Bay which is near the coast you know Coco Beach yeah, uh -huh. and so we, we make the, the trip up here yeah we uh we go to Bible Baptist Church and um we were pretty much just wanted to talk in the moment because we, we did a lot of stuff on the internet and hear a lot of stuff about, you know, the LDS church. But by that, I got some, some questions that are from, like, you know, online. I just want to see, you know, what y'all believe, what y'all really believe. You know, like, is it true what I'm reading and all that? Cause it's easy to, you know, have, hear some gossip about some people and, and just have that mindset, oh, yeah, they're weird and all that. There's anti about everything. Yeah, so. So just some questions that they, they might, you know, some may be simple, some may be kind of question, tough questions. Um, and the, the kind of thought I have was, we're going to ask you questions, and we're going to listen to everything you say. Yeah. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to jump on you. We're not going to say, oh no, that's wrong. The goal is like, we just want to hear everything you have to say, and just, just, just want to know, like. Is it, you know, is it true? Is this true? Is that true? And I'm sure y'all might have talked to people and you know, there's a lot of uh, interruptions, people raise their voices. Yeah, we do need a lot of bastards. Yeah, we, yeah, we're here to just, the Bible talks about he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is falling in shame. So, we're here about the matter and we're going to listen to everything you're saying. And, uh, I'm going to, I got them on my phone, the, the notes or the questions. I'm just going to type, type like, you know, your answers. Okay. And so, you know, I can know for sure, like, okay, this is what LDS really does believe, okay? Or this is what they, they actually don't believe that. Yeah. And I can show my friends, like, yeah, you, you, guys, you can't say that anymore. You know, they don't believe that. Anyway, so, uh, search, search for the truth. So, I hope that. Thank you for your time, willingness to come. Here. No problem. Yeah. So you're kind of doing this just like for yourself, just on a personal note, like on a personal note. Or, uh, it's just a personal thing with, you know, between me and him. Like we, um, we think. So we think obviously that um, you know we that that salvation is by a certain way, or that you know we believe in Christ being a certain way. But uh, we also it also seems to point out in the Bible that. that God is, is not a respecter of person. God is, um, you know, wants everyone to, to, to be saved and have a chance. Yeah. And, and if we approach everything like with a preconceived bias or emotion, and we just we go about our lives like that, we're never really conscious except, uh, you know, for a brief argument or yeah. um, and then just go up some ways. But if, if it's like, if we can't put any time into actually you know, meeting some, some other people or you know, meeting other people that have different beliefs and, and hearing, hearing what they have to say and reasoning with them, then we'll just go along in our, our bubble and yeah. Yeah. finish it like that. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I, if, if anything comes comes out about it, I, you know, I hope it's 
hope it's give to give glory to God. Some positives. Are we the, like the only people that you've talked to before or have you talked with other people? I've talked to many before, but I've never, it's kind of like when I was younger, in like the Christian faith, and it was more so just, oh, I believe this, and I'm going to make you believe it. You know what I mean? It wasn't very patient and kind, and I, I hate it that way, so I want to try to do it the right way. You know, just, yeah, just be honest and uh, not, yeah, I this is a new approach. Because, yeah. Like there might be something that y'all know that we don't know, and we need to know, and vice versa. You know what I mean? Because no one knows everything. Yeah. So you know, I mean, there could be something on the other side of the fence that I may see, and it might give me information about what I believe, or vice versa. So and I think this is a good form to um, reason things out. So I, it's just just five questions. Um, I'm gonna ask them. And I'll, I'll ask them and just give y'all both time to answer. And, okay. and once you're ready, I'll ask the next question. Okay? Okay, cool. Yeah, right. you know, I'm just, just to interject. I, I work with some uh, guys over in Palm Bay. Yeah. And, and some of the guys that work there, a good amount probably are Mormons. Okay. And are a part of the LDS church. And, yeah. um, the, you know, I found that them to be some of like the... He's nicer guys or easier guys to work with. So where do you work at? Um, over at Harris. Harris, okay. yeah, I'm Palm Bay. Okay. Uh, uh, older or a bit older? Uh, he doesn't live in Palm Bay. He lives uh, in Fort Saint John. Uh, Bryce, you know, Bryson, you uh, Bryson, Micah Jenkins, Charles Milton. I don't know, that's, that's three of mine, Spencer Chatterton. Uh, okay. Uh, no, no, you're not. So, mind, so, yeah, so, yeah, but, but anyway, basically, I work with these guys, and it would be good to, to you know, know, know more about what they believe or what, what you know, their their take is on things, too. Yeah. Cool, so I'll, I'll ask the first one. And this is kind of a topic, like, for a Christian, like, there's no way. You know what I mean? But... You never know. There, you might be able to explain why, and if it's even true. You know, if it's true, then why? Why exactly is it true? And um, it's it's is Jesus and Lucifer slash Satan are they brothers? And if so, can you like can you explain? Is that true? So I guess what we believe, starting with that, um, is that Christ is obviously the Son of God, but so are all of us. Okay. He's another one of Christ, of God's, of Christ, of God's children um, who rejected uh, God's plan, Christ's plan for us. Um, and then became Lucifer. So spiritually, we are all brothers and sisters, Christ and Lucifer. Um, this, is, this is really what we determine what our actions will be. We determine what we will do, who we will follow, who will follow Christ or Earth. Okay. Okay. So he. How do you become Lucifer? By, I guess, kind of just rejecting um, God's plan. Okay. I'm not... Are you two with the Bible? The Bible, yeah, we, we read a lot. We try to read a lot. Okay. So, we believe that we are all... Like, we, we believe we're... Like, do we come from somewhere else? Or do we just appear here on Earth? Or, like, do you believe that we lived somewhere before we were here? Uh, we believe that God created us in our mother's womb and that there's no like we didn't we didn't exist before then or anything but we but once he creates you you, you live somewhere forever and you never stop existing yeah. but okay. okay yeah i guess that's part of i guess where it differentiates is um we believe before we were born here god created us in the spirit okay um, and we lived as, as spirits um, and that's where i guess we for me that okay to turn away yeah so what kind of what we believe is like we are all, like, we call it the pre-mortal existence. Okay. And we live to all with God. God created us. And we all live together as spiritual sons and daughters of God, essentially. Okay. And like, we wanted to become like God. And one of those ways for us that we needed to become like God is we all needed to gain bodies. Because God has a body. And so, we um, essentially have a new father or a God. 
but you say, when you say, I'm not trying to interject, no, when, you, when you say like God, are you referring to to Heavenly Father, or is it okay. so or, we, every time, not every time. So, we believe that essentially God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit are three separate beings, but one in purpose. So okay. we, we don't believe in like the Trinity with them being like all one being, we believe in them being separate and individual beings with the same purpose. Okay. So, oh, okay. like referring to God, meaning Heavenly Father or God the Father. Okay. Yeah. You know, he, he kind but of not God, plan. not what we would say, like God the Son. Or so, when we say that, okay. that's referring to yeah, right. That's right. referring to Jesus Christ. So, right. essentially, like what happened there is, is God essentially come up with a plan, and Satan and, and Christ. You know, Christ was the head of that plan because he was our Savior. And, so, and Lucifer, or like Satan, he did not agree with that plan, and so part, there was a split, and those that decided not to come, or not to follow that plan, um, essentially did not come to this earth. Hmm. That sounds, I think that makes sense, like, yeah, um, just type, taking notes of the key points you're making. And I think it makes sense. Uh, are, are there parts in, like, so say I, I wanted to read, you know, on that or, or know, find out more about that? Is, is there parts, like, in the Book of Mormon d detailing that? So or you've heard about the Book of Mormon. Yes. Okay, what have you all heard from the Book of Mormon? And what, what are some things that you've kind of heard about? Uh, uh, that uh, it was Joseph Smith received revelation about it on the, the okay. book uh, I think Gold Plates, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it's like to a people in North America, right? Okay. That, uh, and so we each have a Book of Mormon. Uh -huh. like if you'd like, if you don't have one already, we'd love to give you this one. I'll take, I'll take one. one I got. Right here. Really? Yeah. Is there like yeah, notes in there? Or? Yeah. Oh, cool. I don't. Uh, I've never yeah. grabbed it off our shelf. We can get you, we can get you all another book. This is Book of Boys class. class. Yeah, okay. I don't might have been from oh. the, an old one. So. Yeah, that might have been an old one. I just grabbed it. Okay. Oh, oh God, that's awkward. Okay. That's yeah, alright, friend. It's super awkward. Yeah, we get it every now and then. It, it happens, so it's. You have part of the work that done for you. Yeah. So I guess maybe before we about the Book of Mormon. Let's get through some of your questions. And okay. We can kind of tie everything together. Yeah, that, okay. yeah, that makes sense. For a source of what okay. So this is what I found online. The, the first one I just kind of heard people say. Yeah. Okay. But uh, this next one I, I kind of looked it up. It, it's a quote from this one. This this is a, a couple quotes and then I'll ask the question. Okay. Um, this is from LDS Apostle James Talmadge. Okay, yeah, and um, it's from the Articles of Faith. Okay. It's a, he says, quote, We believe in a God who is himself progressive, whose majesty is intelligence, whose perfection consists in eternal advancement, a being who has attained his exalted state by a path which now his children are permitted to follow, whose glory it is their heritage to share in spite of the opposition of the sex in the face of direct charges of blasphemy the church proclaims the eternal truth as man is god once was as god is man may be and then i got one more or i think two more but and the, the next one's by apostle uh, bruce mcconkey um it, it says quote uh, it is the first principle of the gospel to know for a certainty the character of God, the inspired word continues, and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another, and that he was once a man like us, yea, that God himself, the father of us all, dwelt on in earth, the same as Jesus Christ himself did. The father is a glorified, perfected, resurrected, exalted man who worked out his salvation by obedience to the same laws he has given to us so that we may do the same. Okay, and that, that was it. That was all the quotes. And the question is, like, based off of this, like, can I become a God like, like Heavenly Father or like Jesus? Okay. So, 
so I guess uh, a way to, to tackle this concern or this way is we believe in eternal progression. Okay, that he mentioned that. Yeah. In, in yeah. the scriptures, we believe that we can, once we're obedient to God, that we can inherit everything that, that he has. Okay. You know, he said that in the scriptures. So, like, some things for you to know. He was not a or he was just a BYU professor, correct? He was an apostle. So, yeah, essentially, um, those quotes, if they're, like, quoted accurately, yeah, we did yeah, those it's from, from your, um, y'all's web, the, the website. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, essentially, we do believe if we are obedient to God's commandments that he's given us on this earth, if we continue to be obedient, that essentially that we can inherit everything the Father has. Uh, in the Bible, one of the things from Christ's command uh, at the very end of the Sermon on the Mount, be therefore perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Um, we believe that it's very possible that if, if what God the Father is, is perfection, we believe that is obtainable, that is obtainable for us. Okay. So it's only obtainable through the atonement of Jesus Christ. So is, is if you were to become like a you know God like say Heavenly Father, is that the same would you be at the same like level as you know Jesus you, Christ or Yeah, yeah would be as their equal? Right. Um no because no matter what we're it's all because of Christ right? Christ is always um, we're always gonna be indebted to Christ. And God is always gonna be our Father, God is gonna be our God. It's because a child grows up and is now an adult and we then respect his earthly father. It's that same kind of scenario and mentality. So would have so would then in that case would Heavenly Father have a fault? Or looking at the perspective of things and if we are all children of God in those things, like there's no doctrine or anything that there is. But if you look at the setup on how like those principles are taught and if they're to be true, like that would make sense, right? Yeah. But we don't like we don't have any like it's not, it's not, it's not set in stone. It hasn't been set in stone. Oh, okay. But it is a, a very common theory among that okay. yeah, so like oh. we believe in a, a modern day prophet, I'm sure you probably maybe read that online. So we believe in modern day prophets and okay. And what they speak is true, and a lot of them, like, they talk about those things, but it's not, it's not doctrinally, like, set. Okay. Yeah, but that, that, that is common to me. Okay. That makes yeah, that's just where my mind, like, yeah. mind went for a question, is like, yeah. the progression, is, yeah. is that, would that be the case? I don't know. Yeah, that's, yeah. I guess if, if, if Heavenly Father's, all, He keeps progressing, then we, you know, we can't catch up to him because he's yeah. already ahead of us, right? Yeah, he's, he's already perfect right now. Okay, so. okay. So, is there like a, is there a certain stage like he reached perfection? Can he go on past that, or like perfect is perfect though, right? I guess you can't yeah. really go any further. You're asking like super deep questions. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sorry. 19 year old boy. That, like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I, that, that's I stuff understand. Yeah, that, that, that's stuff that we don't know all the deep everything about. Yeah. Um, because ultimately, at this point of our of our existence, it doesn't matter. Okay, okay, I understand. But what we do know is that God is perfect. Okay. And yet we do know that eternal progression is a thing. You can progress eternally. means infinitely. Okay. Right. Okay, well, so yeah, sorry, I'm not trying to... No, you're, no, you're good, man. I just, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're just like, we don't know everything. You know, if y'all know something, how to answer, good. If you don't know the answer, I understand. There's a lot of questions you ask us, we don't know the yeah, answer if yet. If you start so. asking us Bible questions, it's like, yeah, what? I'm not claiming it would have yeah, yeah. claimed enough yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, all right. So that's pretty good. That understood. Um, okay, I've had I've had some Mormon friends say, um, like, tell me that if you want to know if the Book of Mormon is true, just you know, pray and ask God if it's true. Yeah. So kind of a question that I've, I've like it's been on my heart is if if I pray and ask God to show me whether or not the Book of Mormon is true. How can I know that it is God confirming it is true in my heart and not the devil? See what I'm saying? So kind of in the Book of Mormon, and it, it talks about it in two different places that we like to show people. And it talks about it in the introduction, okay. and it talks about it um, in a promise from a prophet in, um, in the Book of Mormon. So 
Like, maybe a little bit about the Book of Mormon first. It's like, like we talked about a little bit, is the Book of Mormon is, an it's another record of another people. It's basically another testament of Jesus Christ. And so, like the Bible, like when we have the Bible, it essentially took place in Jerusalem, correct? And the apostles like Paul and Saul, and, and they all, that was their record, correct? It's the record in Jerusalem. Well, where the Book of Mormon starts is, it starts as a family in uh, Jerusalem, and there was a prophet, and his name was Lehi. And that prophet, he was called by God to take his family and to leave Jerusalem. Okay. So they left Jerusalem, they come, they cross the desert, and then the Lord commanded them to build a boat because they were going to um, promise them. Okay. And so they built a boat and then they sailed over to the Americas essentially. And this this book is an ancient records of the inhabitants in the Americas. Like the ancient Indians, like the ancient, ancient Indians. Okay. It's right. about their people and the prophets there that prophesied of Christ, that did missionary work, that brung people under Christ, that baptized people. This is their record and another wow. testament that Jesus Christ is the Christ. Okay. So ultimately though, I don't know whether your answer that you conceived come from God. Um, everyone receives their answer in different ways. Some people, they, they pray about it and they just know, they recognize that. Other people, as they're reading it, they just think stick out to them. They're like, that makes sense. I like that. And then they, they, they come to know that it's true. Slowly. Uh, the accumulation of time and reading the Book of Mormon. But yeah. ultimately, you get your answer from the Spirit. The Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is the testifier of all people. Okay. And how to recognize whether it's the Spirit of God. Right, like whether it's a good Spirit or... Yeah. How to recognize that it's actually not the Bible. In the New Testament, in uh, Galatians chapter 5. Verses oh. 22. Yep. Oh, okay. Galatians 5.22 is where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. So I'll go ahead and read that. Uh, okay. So, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. So that's, that's one verse 22. So those yeah. things, you can feel love, you can feel joy, feel joy, feel peace. That's coming from the Spirit. So that's how you. That's how you would like try the that's spirit, you, or yeah, that's try the spirit of God. You, you feel like that. When you're feeling those feelings, because we know, like, essentially, like everything good comes from God. So if we're getting good feelings, like essentially that is from God. Okay. And so, okay. like, there's actually like that promise that we were talking about. If you want to read maybe verses um, three through five, that's the promise from. Um, the okay. an ancient prophet, his name's Moroni, and at the end of the Book of Mormon, he's kind of writing this promise. So, so right, right here? Yeah. Three, Verses three, three, five. three through five. Okay. Uh, Behold, I will... I would exhort you that when you shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God that ye should read them, that ye would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men from the creation of Adam even down unto the time that ye shall receive these things and ponder it in your hearts. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, He will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost ye may know the truth of all things. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay. So it's that you're seek, seeking sincerely for the truth, yeah. then He will give you the truth yeah, with a desire to So sincere heart. A desire to change. Willingness. Okay. Yeah, so is that like a dual? Because you, you quote, you're able to quote the, uh, the Bible with that. Or is that is that a Bible, actually? This is the Book of Mormon. Oh, he, he has just a mini set. set. Oh, the New Testament. Okay. okay, but they have the same verse in there? In the New or, Testament? No, no, no. So we we're, oh, oh, we're quoting okay. the New Testament. Yeah. I'm like, okay, because they look, it looks similar. So I'm like, oh, wait, no, is that it? Yeah, no, we I, carry around. Oh, okay. okay. It's just because it's okay. so it's much better. Yeah, than yeah. That. Or, or yeah. Mike, sometimes it's easier. And we, I usually 
because it's the same version too, we usually go with the King James yeah. version. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So essentially, like the important part about the scripture that you just read here yeah. is like when we ask, and if we shall ask with a sincere heart and real intent, having faith in Christ. What chapter and verse is that? Okay, that's chapter ten. Three, three through five. Moroni chapter ten, three through five, and then specifically verse four, it says, "Having we shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent." When we ask with a sincere heart to know ask God if this is true, we have right. to be willing to change if we get that answer. So okay. going on to him with a, with, with a pure heart and wanting to know if these things are true, yeah. God's going to essentially, he's not going to answer us if we find out these things are true and we're not going to act upon it. We're going to find out if these things are true if we have a sincere heart and we're willing to act upon the spirit that comes to us. Okay, so, so if the devil were to say it's true i would know it's the devil by the way he makes he would make me feel bad okay so if i wouldn't feel positive about it it wouldn't feel good it'd be the opposite of peace you know it'd be the opposite of love it'd be the opposite of galatians 5 22 Okay. Okay, that, all right, I understand now. Just, um, that answers... Essentially, God never answers us through, like, bad ways, bad feelings. That only comes from the devil. Okay. All that is good is from God. But it, was, it wouldn't be like a, it wouldn't be an, like an audible response, or audible voice response type of thing. Or, no. Uh, Everyone lot. receives answers in different ways. Everyone but receives you personal personal or you, For you personally, it wasn't, was it like that? It was an audible... Oh, okay. like, or people that you know that you I know have have like heard things that that they describe as like a wonderful place. Oh, okay. There's, there's people that I've heard that have heard all of the voices and stuff, but like the way that I was able to know the Book of Mormon was true is that I kneel down essentially and ask God for myself. I follow this promise and. Through the feelings that I had, I will never be able to say that the Book of Mormon is not true with God that essentially didn't answer my problems. Or didn't answer. Oh, okay. He followed through with this for me because of the feelings that I had and the joy that I was overcome with. I know this book to be true from God. So, okay. is, was there a certain point in your life where... When you, so you're born if you're born in the church in the church or as a more you know Mormon and your family's already Mormon but is there a certain point where you have to say okay well now now I really believe this or, yeah. I, or I don't believe this or whatever I don't no, know, I know. I'm also growing up in the church especially growing up in Utah where the majority of the population there is members of the church um, you see that especially in high school you see a lot of kids by the time they get to high school age you realize I don't know if I, I agree with my parents I don't know if I feel, I feel the same thing, but you see a lot of them um, leave or will kind of actively live their life in a way that the church doesn't Right. So essentially, it's like with personal conversion like to Christ, essentially like you can't force anyone to be converted unto Christ, can we? Like each of us have to make the personal like decision that I want to follow Christ. It's the same thing with like these things. It's like even though that we grew up like maybe knowing the basic simple tr- like stories in the Book of Mormon, the simple stories of the Bible, right. like everyone comes to a point in their life where they like have to decide whether they're gonna follow these things or not. Or not. Right. But, but also everyone, whether you're raised in the church or not, finds out on their own time, in their own way. Like I was raised in the church, I knew that was I knew that I probably didn't know until I was like 10 or 11 when I had to ask him. But I, I know people who didn't even actually know until they were graduating high school. They went to church for 18 years and didn't actually know until they got to Wow. Uh, everyone is. It's different. They're a journey, different path. So, and, and for you guys, you guys, not, not everyone over there is going on to, to like a, a certain place as missionary, right? Or as a, it's, it's, you have to be willing. Or, yeah. Yeah. But um, ultimately, if I didn't, if I didn't approach the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to serve the mission, I wouldn't be here. 
So if you say if somebody gets sent to like a plate like somewhere else that they don't want to be, would, would, could, could that happen too? It's like, well, I don't want to put a beer it's a rough place. Like there's, there's people, we have missionaries all over the world. And like, I think that personally up to the individual, like, especially, right. we believe that, that it's inspired where we go. So you, choose, honestly, you choose the place, you're like, okay, I want to go. Oh. No, we believe that it's inspired of God where we go. And so, like, I know that like, there's a reason why I'm here in Florida. And there's a reason why I'm not in India or somewhere else. But right. I'm going to go mind that both my parents are missionaries. My dad really wanted to go foreign. So out of the country, he wanted to speak a different language. My mom really wanted to stay inside the country and speak English. My mom went to Japan. My dad went to Idaho. Oh. So, like, we don't, oh, we don't get a pick. Wow. So, you're, so she, she speaks Japanese? Or, wow. That's, that's pretty cool. So, some, yeah, that's weird that you don't get to... Well, like, who picks for you kind of thing? Or is it kind of like a randomized? It's not randomized. Oh. Kind of like the Book of Mormon. I believe that the fact, and I can't, I can't give you the exact thing, right here. Okay. And okay. so, this is a little pamphlet that talks about... Oh. Okay. Prophets essentially. So, right. like, I'm sure you know pretty well the, the story of Christ if you read the Bible. I mean, that looks like a pretty used copy of the Bible. Well, the, to be honest, I got this one. Uh, I got this from a pure store. So, okay. a lot of a lot of these markings and notes are were there. <laughs> like this is book of Mormon. Yeah. Cool. This, we got some Bibles in the car. Sure. If you wanna? If you wanna yeah. Get yeah. 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 Thanks. That'd be cool. Essentially, what we do believe is there was a time like Christ come. Well, essentially, we believe that we're all children of God and that God loves us. And like one of the things that God does give us is prophets. Like in this this little pamphlet, and you guys can have these and read over them after okay. we're done. Okay. But like, essentially, God does give us prophets to help us, to guide us. That's a pattern we see all through the Old Testament. You know, we know Christ. He come. He was a little bit different. He was our savior, but right. essentially, he was a prophet and he organized the church. Yeah, he was. A, he was a prophet. I think he's, he was, he was he even called himself a prophet. Yeah, he's a prophet, but he's also he's much more instead right. of God. Right. But um, he was what he was prophesied about. All the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. So at this time, like during Christ's ministry, he called twelve disciples, didn't he? And this is actually a picture of Peter and a picture of Jesus Christ. Okay. And Jesus Christ is giving Peter, like, we call it the priestess, or like the power to be able to act in God's name. Okay. So like, we know the disciples went out and they like performed miracles and all that. That was yeah. essentially done through the authority of being able to act in God's name. Okay. And so, kind of to, leading up to the question of like, how we believe like, where we believe, I guess we come out on missions, is we believe Joseph Smith um, essentially saw, have you ever read the first vision, or the account of the first vision? I mean, I think I've heard here and there, but like not the actual. Okay. So, we believe, let me see this right here, we believe that like just a little bit about Joseph Smith, since this is a, a, probably a name that you might even have a question about, okay. or things like that, but Joseph Smith was a boy. In the 1800s, he had lots of different questions, kind of like here in Florida. Mm -hmm. He grew up in Palmyra, New York. I can never, I'm not, I can never say that word. Palmyra. Upstate okay. New York. Oh, okay. Is it still there? Palmyra? The, the same name as this place? The city's still there, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So, he had this question about, like, which church is true. He was reading in the epistles of James 1 5, I believe it is. Any of you on wisdom, let him ask of God. And like he was being influenced a lot of different ways. There's a lot of like fire and brimstone talks. Religion was hot in that area at that time. And he had a, a lot of different questions. And he wanted to know essentially how he could save his soul and which church he needed to join. Okay. Well, he had an experience 
When he was reading that, he decided he needed to go out and grow up trees behind his house where it was reverent, where he could do that, where he could literally ask God, you know, which church he wanted. And this is kind of a picture that illustrates um, what happened. But like in Joseph Smith's own word, this is kind of a, this, in Joseph Smith's own words, this is what happened. As I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head above the brightness of the sun, which descended gradually until it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, when the right light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description. Standing above me in the air, one of them spake to me, calling me by name, saying, This is this is my beloved son. Hear him. Okay. And that account essentially is here on the back in the gray, if you want to reread that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do. From this experience, we were able to find out, and you, you can stop me at any time. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, and yeah, ask yeah, questions, I hope you know that. But from this experience, we learned that God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to Joseph Smith, and they told him that all of the churches, they draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And so like they might mean a lot of good, but really they're not they're not teaching the true points of the gospel. And so the reason that was needed for this, and we call it a restoration of the church, is because during the time, if you look at the apostles after like the apostles with Christ, like after Christ was crucified, after he atoned for our sins, he was rejected by the people, right? Mm -hmm. He was crucified. The apostles, if you look at like back in their history, I'm not much of a history guy, but if you look at the history of the apostles, similar things were done to them. Okay. Yeah. Essentially, they were hunted down, they were killed, and people rejected that message. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's kind of like at this time, like a glass ball. Like when Christ was on the earth and established the church, it was like the perfect glass ball. And when the people started rejecting it, killing the prophets, the ones who God specifically chose to preach the word to them, it's like we dropped this glass ball. It went everywhere, right? And there's still good people on the earth that wanted to follow Christ. So they pick up like little pieces of the puzzle, right? And try to match it together. But not everyone had all the pieces. You know, some people had, you know, these two, or someone said, hmm, I think this and this is what he kind of meant. And that's why you see so many churches, like especially here in the, mm. like in the south, like you have like, a church on every corner, right? Yeah, that's yes. the south. And yeah. so from first that, first Christian church, second Christian church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like, so that's where a lot of these different churches come from. And so that was why there was a need for a restoration. When did, like, do y'all know when exactly the, the glass ball was dropped? Where, when the exactly glass, this happened? The glass ball was not meant for it was medical. Up and representing the church, but around yeah. 180, I would say, when the last apostle was killed. That's when kind of like it was, they it was lost. Like a metal, like, it was like the, the gospel was essentially supposed to be the glass ball. And like after the apostles were all killed, it was like those teachings of Christ were literally like scattered. So, okay, so oh, the apostle. After the last apostle yes. killed. So pretty so much. Like the first 12, other 12. Well, during, during well, because if you look at the time in history when, like, the apostles literally were being chased down, literally, like, like being hunted down, and so they're teaching right. people, and they took those truths, and those truths were kind of scattered, and they were kind of twisted. Kind of, have you ever played, like, the telephone game where you tell someone something, uh -huh. they tell someone, and they tell someone, and they tell someone, by the time it comes back right. to you, it's, like, not. It's completely different. It's completely different, right? Yeah. So you had a lot of that kind of stuff happening, and so you didn't have like the full truth. You didn't have the full like metaphorically glass ball. You just had like, a handful of truth here, a handful of truth here, so a handful of truth here. Around 100 AD, kind of the yeah, church. I was probably around 100 AD, that was the last one day of the apostles died. Okay, so they, the church got overcame around 100 AD, and then all the way. So that till, time till from. When that church was kind of overtaken, I guess, yeah. to Joseph Smith, we call that gap okay. of time like an apostasy. And okay. it actually talks about it. There's a scripture here from Amos. Let me see if I can find it. 
I think I saw something. It said Amos. Right here. Okay. Amos. Yeah, right here. Amos 8, 11 through 12. And then it says, Behold, I will be an apostasy. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the pamphlet. Behold, the days are before. Behold, the days come that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And people shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. So essentially what the scripture is talking about is it's talking about an apostasy. Okay. When there was a time that God's word. I just wondered if anybody wanted a Saturday sports paper. I'm okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Thank, Thank you. you though. But essentially we believe the scripture is talking about a famine, not a bread nor of water. Okay. But a famine of hearing the Lord's word. Okay. Or a famine of the true gospel of Jesus Christ not being upon the earth. Well, ultimately that's what prophets and apostles do. They, they, they teach the word of Christ. They, they preach the gospel. Yeah. And when they weren't alive on the earth, there was no one here to, to do that. And there was no one here to make sure the teachings were, were correct. And like that's kind of the same idea I was talking about the, like the telephone game. You're going to get mistakes here and there. People are going to misinterpret things. Or when they translate right. the Bible in different languages, you're going to, every language is, is translated differently. Okay. Um, and through the years, what you have now is, is very different than what you had thousand years ago or two thousand years ago so this restoration is what we call this the first vision through the rest of, essentially god the father and jesus christ called joseph smith a prophet and he said you know you're going to be the next prophet we need you to restore things to, to correct the order and from that experience the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints was born and it was pretty hard for like I guess this is a picture, I mean, I'm just getting ahead of myself. This is a picture of Peter, James, and John okay. restoring that same authority Christ had given to them because not only was the word of God lost, but the priesthood was lost. Okay. Being able to act in God's name was lost. Okay. That priesthood authority. If you look at the similarity between these pictures, this is Jesus Christ giving that to Peter. And this is Peter, James, and John giving that same priesthood to Joseph Smith. So not only like did God call Joseph Smith a prophet, but he gave them the same priesthood, the same um, authority to be able to act in God's name. Okay. So, yeah, well, I was going to, um, this next question is kind of long. Uh, I was going to, but if you have something to say, go ahead. Go. I was going to say, part of that, that, that restoration, of the priesthood, but also like a reorganization of the, of the 12 apostles. We believe that today the church is led by a prophet and a, and a quorum of 12 apostles, just as the church was in the time of Christ. And when you ask questions like, how do we get the sign to go somewhere? We do fill some paperwork and, and that paperwork ends up in the, in the hands of like, one of them. Okay. Oh, okay. They personally pray about every single missionary that gets assigned. And, and yeah. make that that's a lot, of, a lot of people to think about, right? I mean, that's a lot of people to think about. But kind of wow. just closing up the end of this question. Yeah. Like, it's hard for a lot of people. Like, we talked to a lot of people out there, and it's hard for people to believe that, like, a 14-year-old boy, he's 14 when this happened, saw God the Father and Jesus Christ. So they're able to. God provided proof that they was able to be like this was true, and it is through the Book of Mormon. And it's through that promise that we, we shared with you, because Joseph Smith, he didn't write this book, he translated it okay. from like an ancient Hebrew to like English. He had only a third grade knowledge, and he translated this book. And that, book. and that translation took place because of the power that he was given. Okay. And you can know if Joseph Smith's a prophet by knowing if this book is true. Everything that our religion comes down to is this. The Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion. It is, so it, is that the original uh, book, you know, or original mm -hmm. words or translation, yeah. like, you know, people say about the, the Bible? It's only been translated once. Okay. It's only been translated oh. once. Oh, it was, was it like something that when he got it, was it absolutely like perfect and everyone could just like latch on to it and believe it was true? It's like, there's people that say even the Bible is like, 
you know, was mistranslated or whatever. Like, only the original was, was true, you know what I mean? Like, now we just have a copy of a copy. And yeah. People try to say it's been, re like, revised and all that, but it's really... Um, we believe that God preserved His Word for us so we can know the truth and not be confused. So, so yeah, the, that, that book has only been translated one time. So, like, okay, so what Joseph Smith got... Oh, wait, is Joseph, like, yeah, Joseph Smith translated it from the ancient, Hebrew. ancient language to okay. English. That's what it is right there. It hasn't been... Wow, okay. Oh, wow. Since. So it hasn't been translated since... Or translated or changed since then. That's the same. Okay. Wow. I think all I did is break it up into verses. Cool. They wouldn't be but, um, oh, after after you teach it, after Joseph translated it, then it was yeah they broke it up in verses. Broke it up. The same thing with the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. To me. But um, the Book of Mormon ultimately is it, part of the proof that Joseph Smith was a prophet. The Bible teaches that in order to know whether a prophet is actually a prophet, the Bible teaches by, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruits or what they put out, what they put out. Book of Mormon, the, the fruits of Joseph Smith. Ultimately, if you, if you pray about it, as you talked about earlier, you know that the Book of Mormon is true, that it is in Scripture, just like the Bible, and you can know what they prophet. Okay. Uh, that kind of ties in good with the next question. Yeah. Um, like, being able to trust, you know, what what's right in there, and that telling you whether or not Joseph Smith is true and all that. Maybe you can kind of help me out with... I'll, I got a couple quotes, one from the Book of Mormon, and two from Doctrine, Doctrines and Covenants. So it kind of confused me. They seem to contradict, but maybe y'all have some light you could shed upon it. Uh, and let's see here. If you if this is running like what time too is late that for you now? guys. Oh, 150. My, my watch is off. 150. 150. We don't have another appointment until like 6 o'clock at night. Okay, so okay. We got plenty of time. It, yeah, I mean, because if, if, you know, if you guys like... That had to go somewhere. We can now break it up. Meet, yeah. You know, meet again and ask the rest of it. We're down to meet again after this too. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. That might help. Thank you. Okay. So the question is, in the Book of Mormon, uh, where'd it go? I just lost it. <laughs> oh, uh, in in the Book of Mormon, page eleven. You can keep oh. that one. We'll get you another one. If you're oh, from okay. Palm Bay, Thank you. we got missionaries in Palm Bay as well. What? Page 111. And we can get you like the ad yeah. your address and phone number if you want. And oh, they wow. can swing by. They can drop you off a new Bible, all these kind of different pamphlets okay. that you want, and a new Book of Mormon for free. Wow. If you're down for that. If that's something maybe, you're interested in. Yeah, maybe so. Um, or, or I can... Like, I've seen these two... Um, because I go, I go to a lot of thrift stores, like Goodwill and different places, and I've seen seen one of these. I can yeah. pick them up like that too. You can pick it so up. it's less cost for you guys. Like, you know, they're free for us. They're free for us. So it's oh, like, wow. if you want, like, I'm down to give you a brand new speaking book of Mormon before you go pick up a used one. You know what I mean? Cool. Like, okay. Like well, I, don't, I don't have all the notes though. The highlight. Mm -hmm. hey, I like, I like his. Yeah. <laughs> um, it says. I hope I wrote this reference right. It says uh, Book of Mormon. Page 111, verses 23 through 24. Are all the book of, books of Mormon have the same page reference, or the English ones do? They really do. So, like that one will have the same page. Like that's that one. Oh, that's cool. That's that's helpful. It is a miniature group. Okay, so you page said 111. Page 111. Oh, no, I went to 11. Like, one, one, I'm 11. sorry. 111. 111. Okay. Uh, verses 23 through 24. Tell me if this is what God says. Uh, for behold, thus saith the Lord. Is that it? Yeah, it says. The beginning of chapter 9, or 29. That, that's what it is? Okay. Uh, for, for behold, thus saith the Lord, this people begin to wax in iniquity. They understand not the scriptures, for they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms because of the things. Oh, wait. Is it right? Are we in the right spot? Or spot? I may have written down the wrong. Said, reference. Hang on, you said 111? Oh, oh, wait, wait. Okay, we're right there. Okay. Two? Verse two? What verses did you say? It says verses 23 through 24. So that, that probably what you're reading there is anti. Someone's took him the Book of Mormon, copied it, and changed it, because there's a lot of people that don't like Mormons. Okay. I'm sure you found a lot of negative stuff on 
yeah. yeah. Mormon. Either anti or it's the wrong reference. So, Wait, okay. so if you if you type that phrase in on uh, Google, I wonder if you can find the right. That's or if you have a, like a Book of Mormon search engine or something. Yeah, okay. so there, yeah. there's a Book of Mormon. In fact, there's, yeah. a, there's a Book of Mormon app for free. If you okay. go to like LDS, like if you look up LDS, or all the Play Store, Google Play Store, it's just Book of Mormon. If you just search Book of Mormon, like oh, I found it. Jacob, Jacob two. Jacob two. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that might be. That's an option too. It said like that'd be a lot have a digital, and yeah. I can search search yeah. keywords. You can search keywords and stuff. Wow. Okay. Jacob two. Oh, it's not even. Yeah, the other one was taking me to Second Nephi. So where's Jacob? Um, Jacob is the next book after Second Nephi. Oh. oh yeah, there we go. There we go. So Jacob chapter two. You said. Yeah. Let me see where. How many verses? So 23? Is there a 20? Yeah, it looks like. There's a verse 23. Wait. Oh, no, yeah, that's I not. It. So it's, yeah, oh, we hold the same. It starts midway through the verse. Oh, it does? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so, alright, good. So hopefully we can follow along. Tell me if I stray off for some reason. Wait, verse 23. Pick up 23. 20, is it 22 through 23? Or? 23, then 4 we follow Oh, yeah. Like okay, okay. Yeah, okay, let's go so. Ahead and read it. Okay, so. Uh, for behold, thus saith the Lord, this people begin to wax in iniquity. They understand not the scriptures, for they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms because of the things which are written concerning David and Solomon his son. Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable before me, saith the Lord. So is that the same thing? Okay, okay, cool. Um, and then, so what kind of confused me? Now, that's why I'm asking y'all to see, yeah. see what y'all have to say to maybe clarify. Like, the Doctrines and Covenants, section 132, okay. versus... Yeah. That's cool how you, you can pull it up anywhere. Doctrines and Covenants is not in the book. This is what we do 24-7 oh, okay. for two years, man. You get... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's helpful having technology. Yeah, let me... So there's this app that you can get as well, and okay. so like, um, and maybe we'll just show it to you real quick. It looks like this. We have a Book of Mormon app as well, but you can find the Book of Mormon on this. It's called the Gospel Library app. This has everything that we believe on it. Like, these are talks from general authorities or like the modern day apostles and prophets. And it has the has like the Book of Mormon and the yeah, other one, Doctrine. Yeah. yeah, it has everything we use. So it has like Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, a lot of other what was it called? information. Gospel, Gospel Library. Gospel and Library. They have like yeah, general conference talks. They have lesson manuals. They have secondary uh, like, manuals. Anything that we use, like in church at all, like everything. It's a recovery program. They have cool. like, anything on here. So if That's you awesome. were to get an app, uh, if you were curious and wanted to look up mm -hmm. what we believe in, you could find videos from apostles, from prophets, from the actual where it is in the scriptures, searching it out on this app, and okay. it's free. So you can check that out too if you want. Okay. So, okay, so let's continue on with your question. Doctrine and Covenants section 132, verses 1, and then it says 39. Let me know what it is. Verses 9, you said? Uh, um, 1, starting at verse 1. Okay. Um, Verily thus saith the Lord, you have, you, have, you have inquired of my hand to understand wherein I, the Lord, justified my servants. Then it says a 39 too, so if I, I don't, I don't know exactly where it skips or stops, but it would be verses 1 and 39, which I'll, I'll go back and read all of it just yeah. to make sure I don't read anything out of context, but okay. um, verses 1 and 39, verily so, thus saith the Lord, you have inquired of my hand to know and understand wherein I, the Lord, justified my servants. David and Solomon, as touching the principle and doctrine of having many wives and concubines. David wives and concubines were given unto him of me. Is that what it says? Verse 39? 39? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so David's wives and concubines were given unto him of me. And uh, then just so I can finish this whole question yeah. before we, because this is probably a good good conversation. 
at Doctrine and Covenant section 132, verse 61. It, it says, um, If any man espouse a virgin and desire to espouse another, and the first give her consent, and if he espouses the second, and they are virgins and have vowed to no other man, then he is justified. It's kind of like uh, in the earlier verses, God just, you know, justified his servants, uh, David and Solomon, and having, and, and it says, David's wives and concubines were given unto him of me. Yeah. So, and then, um, and then, uh, and Brigham Young said, in the Journal of Discourses, yeah. 11, 269, he said, the only men who become gods, even the sons of God, are those who enter into polygamy. So I'm sure you are familiar with this. It might be touchy, I don't know. But You're not going to offend us now. Cool, right okay, good, good, yeah. <laughs> so like, so, if, um, in the Book of Mormon, it says, which, which thing was abominable for yeah. me? You know, that they had all these wives and concubines. And then Do Doctrine and Covenants, it says, David's wives and concubines were given unto him of me. Um, maybe, and then, you know, then, uh, Brigham Young says, you know, in order, yeah. I'll say it again, the only men who become gods, even the sons of God, are those who enter into polygamy. Uh, that's, I need, I need help understanding. Yeah. Like, like, that seems like a contradiction, but maybe y'all could. Yeah. All right, so I guess when it comes to polygamy, we want to say first, we do not believe in the polygamy. We do not practice Okay, okay. Right oh, but it's only, so, is it some? Some Mormons that do, or is it? No, so, oh. so not, no one in our church today does. No one in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints does. We okay. have break off churches, off oh. of the Church oh, of Jesus yeah. That's where you get denominations. Is the the FLDS, the RLDS. Yeah. I think FLDS the does. The Reformed LDS Church oh, wow. like break offs off of our church, like the main Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. You get little break offs, right. and they still believe in practicing the Holy Spirit. So they hold to like different, different. Yeah, they just like things. Yeah, they broke up different times. Like the FLDS church broke off like the practice of the stuff. So they broke off and they continue to do practice. But um, well, ultimately, when it comes to polygamy, you, you look throughout the, the Bible, and then polygamy has been a thing that's been there for. I mean, like the twelve tribes of Israel mm -hmm. are a result of polygamy because Jacob has four wives. We oh, yeah, have Solomon, Solomon, Moses, hundred or thousand wives or something. Like I that. don't know how many, but, but yeah, yeah. But the crazy thing, but I guess so. The big concern is like, is that was that right? Even though they did it, I guess you know, was is that the right thing to do? We is that, that, I don't know. We believe that polygamy, um, is the practice that when it is ordained of God, um, when God approves it. It's good. It, it's, it's it's perfectly fine. But the, the thing is, when when like David, when he he married God with Bathsheba, that was not that one was not a perfect of God. That that act of polygamy was very much abominable. That very that was very much against what we believe. Right, what he believed is what David believed as well. But um, yeah. polygamy when when it was accepted by God or commanded of God is allowed. But when it's not needed, so this in today's day and age, it's not practiced. Okay. It's only when it is this, it is specifically commanded. And hopefully, I'm not. I know I only pulled one quotation from Brigham Young. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go back and make sure I look at it right. But it, what what does he mean when he says the only men who become gods, even the sons of gods, are those who enter into polygamy? So that one I don't know as much about. So I do know that part of that eternal progression, um, that, that eternal progression in the exalted and becoming like God, um, is that's a fan, that, that's something that is possible within within a marriage. Um, what, you, what you have to understand though is the discourses of Brigham Young. That's not doctrine. Okay. Yeah, that, a lot of the discourses that's of Brigham, Brigham Young. Young's opinion, opinion? and okay. his personal teachings. Like there's a difference between like when the things doctrines. are doctrinally sound and some is opinion. Like. On a, like I have a PDF of okay. the whole um, like discourses, discourses of Brigham, of Brigham Young. Young. Oh, what wow. you gotta understand is that Brigham Young was a prophet during that time. He was the prophet during that time during polygamy, and 
some of the things that he were, that he did write, was not all doctrine. It was his opinion there as well. And so the discourses of Brigham Young, he says a lot of like really neat things and a lot of doctrine sound things, but you have to take that with a grain of salt because it is not official church doctrine. So, okay. Yeah. Just like anything, that's, that's what you're not gonna find this what it brings on the gospel library app. It's like if, if me, like as Elder Wright, write a book and say, hey, oh, yeah, this is, we believe in this. Like, that's not approved by like church headquarters now. That's not considered doctrine. So, was he a, was he like a uh, apostle? Brigham Young. So he was the or second. At one point time or something. But he was the second president of the church so after okay. Joseph Smith was murdered. After Margaret. Joseph Smith was murdered, he was the uh, the next prophet. So, but that's not a that's not like a lower level or so, if you would, than than an apostle or something. Or about the same. Or no, I say same. Oh, okay. He's the senior. He'll be the senior apostle at the time, which is given the title prophet. Okay. Um, but. But even the, 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 the prophets and the apostles, yes, they, they do they do speak for God. They, they receive revelation for, from God for the for the church for the world. But they're also it's not every not everything they but say. Yeah, they're still human. Not, they're still human. They still um, have their own thoughts, their own opinions. Right. Um, so all that that quote, I do say there's a, there's a lot that is correct in there. Like it is true that in becoming like like God or that that eternal progression, polygamy can be practiced there. Like if you were married to more than one. Polygamy is practiced in this life, it will be practiced beyond. Jacob is beyond this life, with his four wives, he still have his four wives. But just so, me with one wife, that does not exclude me from having that opportunity. But that's a lame, that's, so but he, he, is he speaking of later time or current or both or something? What you have to understand is, Polygamy is all right when it's ordained of God. And so if you believe that like the current prophet right now, his name is Russell M. Nelson, that's his name. And he has said polygamy is not a thing. It's not a thing right now, it is not ordained of God right now. But there's been certain times, like the saints, Joseph Smith, he was given revelation to start polygamy. It took him eight years to do that because it's so hard for him. He thought that for eight years. He thought it was wrong. but. Essentially, God commanded it, he did it, and during that time, the saints, Brigham Young, he was like, God has ordained this, and so that's what he wrote, right? This is true. God ordained it, polygamy needs to be a thing. So, yep, God ordained it, we're going all in. That's kind of, that was kind of Brigham Young's mentality, okay. like, that's, all or nothing. That's, that's guy. where he said, <laughs> he's, 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 pretty kind of he's like, all right, like, right, right, you know, Joseph's doing it, I'm going to... You know, have like whatever. God 20 said wives that we need to do it, so he said, "Yeah." That's, but that's it wasn't given to. So it was just given to Joseph, or at the time you're saying it, it might have been given, given to all, all, all priesthood holders. It's given to yeah, the body of the church. The body of oh. the church. So and so, like polygamy, it is an interesting subject because a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about it. So we just believe in doing what God ordains at certain times. And so we believe at that time for a lot of practical and, and reasons that like I can say I honestly have no clue why polygamy was needed at that time. But in God's eyes, he saw that it was needed. So we just sustain our, our leaders that they are called from God and we follow them. Okay. That's where we're kind of added that question myself. Yeah. And then I the, the, with the first thing, sorry, uh, Go ahead. Gotcha, but like with the first thing, it was almost seemed like it, in the first thing he read, it was almost seemed like he said that was an abomination. Wait, it's then, not called of God. Not called of God. <laughs> because then, in the Book of Mormon at that time, those right. people, that was not called of God and it was a whoredom when it yes. was not called so the, of yeah, God. The people here, they, those two specific guys, I mean, like where he's like, all right, Solomon, David. And then in the and then the second thing he read said something like, oh, yeah, how he gave he gave, he, gave them, he, to, he allowed them. You know, it was almost, I, it was almost seeming like the same. He was talking about the same people. Yeah, right? or, yeah, very similar, but like David and Solomon, he's like that was the bomb. And then the other one, that's just what was kind of hard to like. Yeah, no, with, like, that, no, that, I understand that. It's kind of confusing for me too. But um, honestly, like, well, I know, like in the, in the situation with David, though. David was the first practicing um, and God ordained that God was fine. That's why 
but then and that's why he was standing next to him. So I've justified that. Like, do you know what the story of like Bashiva? 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 Yeah. You know yeah. how he actually acquired her as a wife? Right, yeah, it was he by was getting taken the, her by getting the husband killed. So that 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 was also an act of polygamy. That was definitely not allowed. That was definitely not ordained of God. That, right. Because that led to the downfall yeah. of, of David. Right. Um, and eventually David's son Solomon, like Solomon as well. Kind of what about with Solomon? Name. Like, how was his not? I don't know too much about the story of Solomon. Okay. Um, I, I most just know about David. So that's what I'm basing this off of. Right. Um, but I'm sure you see a similar situation with Solomon. Yeah, I don't know too, if it has of, of practicing it. If, if some happened, I don't know. I've not yeah, heard of Solomon. But. Yeah, if, if you're practicing polygamy for the sake of, of pleasure or, or want, rather than because it's ordained of God, then it is not okay. Polygamy should not be practiced for personal gain. It should not be practiced for personal reasons. It, it should only be practiced when, when God has ordained specifically it. ordained it. Here's a, bo a bonus question. Uh, okay. Right. If, well, I still have one more question I wrote down, but if God reordained it, is that like y'all wouldn't be opposed to it? Y'all would y'all take up multiple I mean, wives? I mean, I guess that's a I'd probably that's a personal question. That's like if I really have faith in the prophet, like Russell and Nelson, if he said that, I guess I I have to pray about it and see if I do. Yeah. But. So when they when your prophets speak. Like, is what they say a, a final authority, or like what you said, you'll pray about it before you do it? Yeah, we believe in to pray about it. Okay, pray. so they're not uh, like an absolute final authority? Well, they're, still, they're still human. They're okay, still okay. Not, just because someone has that title or that role doesn't make them perfect. Okay. Moses was a prophet, but he wasn't perfect. Yeah, right. that makes right. sense. Okay. Okay, so even today, like, it's not like, you know, they say this and that's how it has to be. Or, or is it, and then if you if you prayed about it and disagreed, would you have to, like, would you kind of be off, off on your own type of thing? Or, yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, like, the way that things spoke, where anything spoke in general, is considered yeah, sure. Those are good questions, honestly. Yeah, I don't know, because it's tough, because so say I'm interested, and I know this is like, you know, kind of like just begging the question or just a mute point, maybe. But say I'm say I was in like the you know more a Mormon, and yeah. then then I was at the time practicing polygamy, and then it came out that one of the apostles or the, you know, the current prophet said, "Oh, okay, this is out. You know, we're not yeah. doing this anymore." And then but they, so they had to have the then make the decision. Okay, well, I either go along, I go with that, or. You know, I go with what I've been doing and what I feel so, to be yeah. right. So, well, like, and that's like when they they ended the practice of polygamy. Yeah. Of the people who were polygamists, they they were kind. Of, they're not going to ask for divorce. That they were just no no more um, polygamous marriages. So you could continue having your wives, but you can't get married to another. Yeah. And that oh, practice okay. is like, over. A lot of people had to make that decision. What you were saying, because that's why we have the RLDS Church, the Reform oh, okay. LDS Church, because. God said like, through a prophet that like, hey, this is we need to stop. And and what if they what, could it could it not be that so say they prayed and then for them it would it's, it would still seem like the right thing to do. So then they like had to leave at that point. Or so not, basically, not really. what you're saying is what happens if we disagree with the prophet? Right. Well, we're promised. I believe Joseph Smith promises that there will never be another prophet that leads us astray. And so, and I have lots of faith in Russell and Nelson being a true prophet of God, and I know it's been promised that he's never going to lead us astray. Okay. And so, I can pray about those things, but... Yeah, and big major decisions like that, they're not just made off the... Off the, of, the top of their head. Or, or like just a, this one man's decision. Okay. Because of how the church is organized, we yeah. have the prophet and his two counselors who are ordained as prophets, here and revelators, and they're apostles. And then below, and you also have the form of the twelve apostles. Together, that's fifteen men, and they don't make any big decisions like like that, like any like or even starting to back up until all fifteen of them are unanimously in agreement. In agreement. Oh, wow. Wow. And then they, they all they all pray about it. They all they all think it through Lord, and then they wait for their own answer. So it's like has to be unanimous. That some of the choices of them, were that fourteen of them feel like yes, maybe we need to do this. But one of them is like I haven't had my answer. 
they'll, they're, they will not do anything until that one has an answer. Well, and then if that's if that's no, then it's it's out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you can just look at that. Are you unanimous among the whole the world and the first person? Okay. So, so you're not going to see. It's like a, almost a check 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 and balance. balance. Check yeah, balance. Check balance. You're not going to see okay. Russell and Nelson who get up there and be like, "We're doing it with me again." Right. Because uh, he may he may feel like that, but unless all fifteen. Yeah. That they're that you have a double witness, triple witness, they're like fifteen yeah. guys. That's right. So some so if like fourteen are, are going one way, the fifteen gets a different answer, then his answer must be wrong. Kind of kind of sit thing or whatever. They just won't move forward until they do receive an answer. They'll keep praying oh, okay. until they have unity. Okay. So you're not gonna see major chiefs like that unless okay. yeah. all fifteen of them are in perfect agreement. Okay. Right. So la last question. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thanks for bearing with us. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a problem. It's okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Last question. I'll I'll go to the Bible in Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Did you come up with these questions? Through my, like, through talking with Mormons before, um, I, and learning what I have learned, they're, like, polygamy. You know, everyone hears about that, that, yeah. you know, that's the topic that is debated, uh, even, you know, um, and then the, the one about, what other question, about becoming a god, that's what I've been told before. Yeah. And I just, I didn't really give the person a chance to explain, I just kind of, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I, no I feel like that was the wrong thing to do. And then I've heard. I think. It, I think probably just anti. You know. So you, you essentially come up with these questions. Like, yeah, so yeah. Did you come in together. Or? Yes. Was, these are mainly him. I, I wish I, I should have been like more prepared and, and you know Amen. had my own questions. Got another but time, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I plan to be. I I haven't been diligent enough in coming up with like some things to ask. But yeah, but. it's just been kind of questions I've had for a long time. And I've never really used the right approach yeah. to get the answer, so I want to do it the right way this time. And it's just, it's easy for me to say something inflammatory, you know, and then it just, it becomes a screaming match, you know, I mean, that's not right, we should, I don't want to do that. So now I'm hoping that finally I can get some conclusions, not from the internet, but from actual LDS. Yeah. So I can, you know, I can tell people they don't, they don't actually believe that. You know? and I guess we could, like you said that you know, there's a website. Uh, you go and like search out answers. Maybe you know, ask somebody on there. But it's like it's more di more direct and and more and personal. More, yeah, personal. If you actually talk to somebody, it's like I get you. What, yeah. I'm, what I'm hoping too is um, the Bible says um, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. And he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. There's been many times where I just answered LDS before they could you know, yeah. tell me exactly what they believe and all that. And the Bible says, full, you probably know a couple people that they just start blabbering. They won't let you talk. Yeah. And I don't want to be that any, that way anymore. So maybe I'm hoping that, you know, y'all giving us great detailed answers that's helped me understand some questions that I didn't get, I haven't had the understanding before. Yeah. And um, and then maybe next time we can meet and if y'all have questions about us, you can do yeah. that. I, I would like to like address address your answers and from the Bible and just give you a reason why, like if, whether or not we agree or disagree, and just see if we can find, you know, if we can reason together and come to a truth. And if, if you know if we end up not agreeing, I still want to be your friend. And yeah. I've actually I've <laughs> actually. Worked with a LDS guy, and we, I go play basketball at his at his church. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not. I'm you not. Play ball with them? Yeah, we played. We played basketball. What well, oh, it was, it was before I didn't live in the land. Okay. I was in Tallahassee. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say, you can come break <laughs> ankles with us one yeah. day. Yeah. You guys have a. Yeah, we, we, we get there. Hard yeah. ball going. That's oh what really? I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the missionaries get together in the ball hard. Oh really? Like, yeah. We have a. Uh, 
supposedly, Lathan says that we get really good ward ball. Like, do we? Hardcore ward ball. So, <laughs> you guys wanna come on? I don't know if I've played that. So. Like, like, basketball, oh, just like, like the ward, like the congregation. Uh, congregation, oh, like <laughs> a bunch of like. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's not so much special, like special kind of yeah, game. So like, right? Okay. Like how it works, we have our congregation are based on like geographical areas, so like oh, okay. your local like, community. Yeah. Okay. So like we'll have like like in the land there's two boards, and the land first board is like kind of just like that part of the land all the way down to like the berry. Oh, okay. And then the land second board is like the rest, the rest of, the of the land over there. Okay. Uh, and you guys are on the second? Just, we're on the first one. Oh, we're, we're on the second one right now, the back of the geographical, but we cut off oh, first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. We cut the back of the first one. Okay, okay. So, so like, it, this is not your jurisdiction, in a yeah. way? Yeah. Okay. Formal orange seed and berry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so the other yeah. ward's not going to be like, hey, we're guys crossing over to our... Yeah, okay. you get a little bit of that, but everyone... <laughs> It's like fine. church. Okay. Like, 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 like having your like, GPS, like, no, yeah. you guys are out of here. Like, <laughs> like the youth will, like, they'll, like, play game with the land first war to play against the war in Cornell. Oh, or, like, man. Like, meet somewhere and then eat. You don't have, like, you can have a jersey, like, Ward, ward 1, Ward 2. <laughs> 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 I don't know. We just all get together in, for yeah, recreation. Yeah. It's not that intense. Is okay. there anything for, like, old, like people with kind of older backs or older? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys do golf or some cricket? I don't know. Oh, we could start something off though. <laughs> I mean, they do uh, activities for like the adults do yeah. activities and stuff. Get together. Yeah. Do things, but they're less physical. All right, you should have started. Yeah. And then yeah. we'll chit chat. Yeah. The book of Isaiah, we'll start at 44. And this is kind of a, um, something I've always said to LDS, and before I would let them answer, I was like, you know, if I, if I go back home and I say, hey, I, I met. Um, uh, Elder Wright today and my friend back home says oh I know who Elder Wright is and then I start describing Elder Wright you know blonde hair uh, purple tie goes, I go, ugly looking, I guess. <laughs> but, but if I describe you to my friend back home and he thinks he knows you but then I, my description of you doesn't match the Elder Wright he knows we have two different Elder Wrights yeah. see what I'm saying okay. so, so if, the, if the Jesus I know is is I'll, I'll explain like with these verses kind of like who I believe he is, and I've always kind of like thought y'all maybe think about different have a different one. Like, he's different from the one I believe. So yeah. maybe after I read these, you can clarify if that's true, or I'll give you a chance to answer. I won't just cut you off. Um, Isaiah 44 verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of Hosts. So to me, it sounds like two people are about to say one thing. It says, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And then verse 8 kind of reiterates, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Um... And then just last last verse, and I'll let you just yep. tell me exactly what, how you feel about it. Isaiah uh, 43, go back one chapter. Isaiah 43, verse 10, it says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So, like, according to these verses, to me, it sounds like there's only one God. And there's a mystery, though, in that 44 verse 6. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So you got two people, it sounds like. And then these, these two people say one thing. And they say, There's no God beside me. So to me, I've kind of researched it and saw in 1 Timothy 3.16, It says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. You know, Jesus came. He's God manifest in the flesh. And... And then uh, John 1, 2, all things were created by him, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, and right there, you know, in, in Isaiah, it's like, God says, I know not any. And there, neither shall there be formed after Not Before me, there is no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So that's why I, I've had a hard time believing that there's, you know, you can become a God or there's more than one God. But maybe y'all can help me understand why. You know, I maybe I'm misinterpreting it. I think. Yeah. 
just, I know, like, in the Bible, especially Isaiah, Isaiah is, like, deep, you know Isaiah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, like, crazy yeah, definitely, stuff definitely. in there, but we do get mixed up a lot, like, we have God the Father and God the Son, and it talks about that, um, but where, I guess, I'm kind of losing my train of thought, you want to go? So, I guess, like, uh, you look at the Isaiah, the way he wrote, he wrote um, to the, the people at the time around 700 B.C., a little bit before 700 BC, but um, and he wrote as to an audience, kind of expecting them to art to know and understand the world. Because of course they did, but we do not because it's been almost 3,000 years later. Right. Um, so you look at like a lot of the different ancient religions. Um, and a lot of them they, they believed in God, but then they also believed like you look at like, the Greek religion you have that like generation of gods, and that generation of gods, and that generation of gods. But they're all like our gods. I've, I've never really read these verses. I, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've ever read these verses. But um, from what I understand about it, it's almost kind of putting down that kind of belief in God. That the God that we worship, God the Father, is always going to be God. Um, he, will, he will never be replaced or by anyone. No one, will, no one will, will take the place of God. And even if we do progress, become like, like, like God or like the Father, He's still our God. He's still God to us. Um, no matter what, that, that'll never change. Regardless of where we are, what position we're in, what we've been And like, you look in, uh, and this is where we get a lot, I guess, you look at the different uh, scriptures, like in Matthew verses 3, like it talks about how when Christ was baptized. It says, and, that, and Jesus, when he was baptized, and went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and light, lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, who, am I, who I am well pleased. So from this scripture, like we can tell, the Spirit is deforming, or descending, excuse me, descending as a dove. Christ is literally in the water, and then they hear a voice from above, saying, a voice from heaven, saying, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. I do believe that with them being the separate, the three separate beings, and in the Book of Mormon, it, it also talks about that, and them being three separate beings when it talks about Christ being baptized. Let me see if I can find that. It might be in the wrong chapter, but like, for me, I can't remember which one it was, but for me, personally, for Elder Wright, like, I don't understand, like, with the, the, script, with the scriptures being this specific, saying, you know, the Spirit is descending like a dove, Christ is literally in the water, and you hear a voice from above, like, they, I don't think you can get very much more distinct than that in my life. Okay. So that's you mean that that's showing like the, the separation. They are three separate, separate beings, but at the, at the same time, God will always be God. God will always be God, but there's a difference between God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're all super similar because they all have the same purpose, right? But they're just separate, distinct beings working together. Okay. So, so in the, in, in that reference, like. I was looking at the one you mentioned in Isaiah, where it was like, you know, is uh, something about no God formed. Forty-four verse six and eight, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it was no, first three. Oh, forty-three. Verse ten. Verse ten. Verse ten. Hear my witnesses, say the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen. Oh yeah. yeah. So that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Oh, so that one? Like, yeah, yeah. Like what what is what is he saying there? It's like, you know, there won't be one form after him. It's like I don't know if uh, is, I don't know, it's just seen it. It seems like, maybe I'm reading into it wrong, it seems like... Not just come up straight now. No, no, I'm, I'm saying it's like, okay, well, I'm I'm God, there was none for me. I don't know of any other, you know, other, there was none for me before, and there, was, there will be no form after. 
So it seems like he's saying there's there's not going to be another guy. Okay. Good. That kind of contradicts about what we were talking about last time. Is that kind of where you're going? Sort. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so essentially, like, got to us right now, like. This. I'm trying to like put my thoughts into words. They're kind of all scrambled. Like um, God, like He's He's the Father of our spirits. God is God is our Father. But there was we didn't have a, a different God or different Father before, and it was always Him. We're not gonna have a God or Father after Him. It's always Him. Okay, so you're saying in, it's in you're taking it in the sense of like at His His level, there would be no more. There is like no God before him. Yeah, our relationship there will be no God, God in us. Our relationship always stays the same. There there will never be anyone. God didn't replace anyone to us. And no one will ever replace God to us as well. God will always be God to us. He won't be replaced. He hasn't been replaced. Okay. So it's I think that's what it's talking about. Like like that level of God. It's like it's almost like he's saying that there just won't be as as high of a level or something. I don't know. Like, I think a lot of this yeah. we might not understand exactly what he's talking about because just like what we were talking before, Isaiah is speaking, the type of his writing is he's speaking like he's talking to the people that they understand now. We don't always understand. We're coming at this from a, a 2000s point of view rather than a 70s yeah, so, PC. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. Isaiah is really hard to understand. Yeah, it's, it's like it's over 1,000 years yeah, old. It's like 2,700 years old. We don't. We, we Which is crazy as far as the pro prophecy sampling goes because it's like, wow, you know, things were prophesied about, about Jesus Christ. Isaiah 1,000 years or 500 yes. years plus before. Isaiah prophesied like, a lot about Christ. Well, um, I hope I hope the way we presented it is was fair and not you know. Yeah, man, you guys, you guys are pretty chill. Like, yeah. okay, good, good, good. Likewise, you don't have to be so uh, formal with us now. Okay, We're just teenagers. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, yeah. we, um, if I would love you know to meet again, and if either y'all can, well, I, I was hoping you know just kind of put together. Okay. Um, some some answers to what y'all said and just see what you uh, what you think about it. Yeah. Okay. And in the end, Jesus said, "Then what there's, let them hear." Yep. He never said, "You will believe what I." You know what I mean? He never forced anyone to believe. Yep. So, um, and then if y'all have questions, yep. that that'd be cool, man. I, it's all about learning the, what the truth yeah. is. What church do you guys exactly go to? You both go to the same church? Yeah. Or? Bi yeah. The Bible Baptist and the it's Bible in, uh, off Glenwood Road. Okay. Bible Baptist. Bible yeah. Baptist. Yeah, so I kind of slur it, <laughs> say it together. Bible, Bible. When is your, all your, all, or when's your, uh, your service? So, we have uh, Thursday night, 7.